For the next minutes, watch and listen. And you might just learn something that can help you increase your membership by 10%. That's right, 10% in just eight weeks. Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, in this video, we're going to cover three things. Why membership matters, how to get members, and the action to make it happen. Okay then, let's start by talking to someone who knows a little bit about recruiting. Hi, Lim. Hi, David. Hi. 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 Oh, a bit wet. Right. Come on in. Thanks. Would you like to take a seat? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> right then, David. You were responsible for the Liberal Democrat recruitment campaign in the run-up to the 92 general election, were you not? Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. The viewers at home would be uh, interested in a few answers to questions about membership. Specifically, why is membership so important? Well, membership is the key to the party's activities in the long term. It brings in money, it leads to extra, extra activity, and of course that all leads to progress. OK, let's talk about money. What do you mean by that? Well, for instance, ten new members would bring in 50 to 60 pounds to a local party and 50 to 60 pounds will normally pay for an average size ward focus. Mm -hmm. So there's a real practical advantage to recruiting? Yes. Uh, let's move on to action. What do you mean by that? Well, membership campaigns don't just bring in new members. If they're done properly, they bring in all sorts of other spin-offs. Extra leafleters, extra poster sites, even jumble for the next local jumble sale. Mm -hmm. And I guess that leads to your third point about progress. Um, yes, of course. The larger the party's membership base, the deeper its roots go into the community, the better attuned its policies become to the aspirations of the British people. Anything else, David? Yes, the key point is that recruitment is not an optional extra. It's an essential prerequisite to us making further progress. Well, you've certainly given us food for thought. Yes, but the key is thinking about it isn't enough. Actions speak louder than words. Well, you're preaching to the converted here. Thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us. Thanks. And I'll see you soon. Yep. So, that's the theory. But does it work in practice? Yes. 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 Lembit, don't forget to tell them about the five-point plan. Ah, yes, the five-point plan. Recruitment is so easy with this, you wouldn't believe it. So, to tell you about the five-point plan, let me hand over to, to me, in the studio. Uh, thanks, Lembit. Anyway, the five-point plan. These five points are applicable anytime, any place, anywhere. So, let me take you through the five-point plan, starting with point number one. And the first point is, introduce yourself. They may not know why you're there, so you've got to make it clear by saying you're from the Liberal Democrats and you want to thank them for your support. Establish that you're speaking to the right person, and then go ahead and thank them for their support at the last general election. It's as simple as that. OK, let's move on. Activity. Explain to them that unlike the other parties, we're active all year round. Point out the local focus newsletter or some event that's taken place on our behalf in the area recently that may have been useful or relevant to them. That will establish us as something different from the other parties and give them a good reason to carry on listening. Let's move on to number three. Thirdly, funding. A lot of people are surprised to learn that we don't get state funding. Tell them that unlike the other parties, we don't get money from big business or from trade unions, so all our money comes from our membership. They'll be surprised at that, and impressed by the fact 
that that means they have real democratic control of the organization. It's very important that you mention this point before you move on. Let's move on to number four. The fourth point is inactivity. I don't mean your inactivity. I mean that you must reassure them that they don't have to get politically active as soon as they join the party. A lot of people are very put off because they think they have to sell their soul to the organization. Tell them that three quarters of our members don't set foot outside their house on political business. They merely pay the subscription annually. Remember, at this stage, you're trying to get a new subscriber. Once you've done that, you can always return and find out to what extent they want to get active. OK, let's move on to the last point. Finally, the sliding scale. At this point, you seal the deal. You haven't got money yet, and you do it by showing them the bottom of the membership pad and indicating the recommended membership fee and also the minimum fee. Then let them fill in that part of the form. You'll often be surprised because you could get far more than you would ever have dared ask that person. There was an old lady in Bristol who gave a friend of mine 500 pounds for their membership fee. He says he would have asked for about three pounds. And that's a true story, by the way. So, those are the five points. Hopefully they're clear. Lest you've forgotten, let me run through them again. First of all, introduce yourself and establish your speaking to the right person. Then, remind them that we're active all year round. Point out that we only get funding from our membership. Reassure them that they don't have to get active unless they want to. And finally, let them fill in the sliding scale at the bottom of the membership form itself. OK? Well, that's it. That's the five-point plan. So welcome. You have entered the recruitment zone. In order to give you a feel for what it looks like, we now want to look at the four key ways you can apply the five-point plan to get new members. Those four ways are door-to-door -door canvassing, which you're familiar with, running a stall, which you may not be so familiar with, telephone canvassing, and last of all, writing letters requesting membership. We're going to look at examples of each of those. Let's start with door-to-door -door canvassing. Exactly. Phil Appleby doesn't know it yet, but he is about to experience a meeting that will change his life forever. He has entered the recruitment zone. Hello. Mr. Appleby? It is. Look, I've told you before, your Jehovah's Witnesses came last week. I've told them I wasn't interested. But I'm not. I'm a Liberal Democrat. Elizabeth Barraclough, in fact. Oh, yes. I think you've supported us in the past, and I would like to thank you for that. All and right. then I wondered if you would like to join us. Me? Join? Why not you? We're active all year round. You know, we, we do things for local people all year round. We're not like the other parties. We uh, don't have support from either the trade unions or big business, so mm. we need members. Mm. But I don't really have much time. Well, we don't need a lot of time. You can be a member who is active or, um, or a member who just supports us with finance. And well, how much is all this going to cost me? Not a lot. Uh, those are the, the <laughs> subscription rates. That's the, the recommended one. I'm sure it is. Yeah. But oh, you could pay good. as little as that for a whole year. Oh, go on then. Go Give on. The... Sign up now. Right? Uh, what do I do? Just, Just fill that in. in. Yep. All right. Yeah, so how long have you been in? Oh, about ten years. And uh, how many hours and a week? And working hard all the time. How many hours a week do you do? At election time? <laughs> about <coughs> 50. Other There's times? Before. Two or three. Ooh. OK. Here's my money. Thanks very much. Right. And that's your receipt, the green one. That's okay. great. Thanks. See you again. OK. Right. Many thanks. Right. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.
<laughs> As you can see, it's not that difficult. If you're going around existing supporters, you can expect to recruit about 1 in 10. If you haven't got a list of supporters, you can always do a door-to-door -door canvas looking for local issues, things you can later use in your newsletter. Even if they don't join up, remember, every door you knock on will remember that you called and that will help you at the next election. It's obviously harder if you're calling at random, but it's still progress and it will still help you in the long term. By the way, all this information is available in the booklet accompanying the video. Anyway, let's move on. The stall. Saturday afternoon in a large industrial town in the north. Tamsin Harris doesn't know it yet, but she's about to have a conversation that will change her life forever. She has entered the recruitment zone. Democrats. Well, I'm quite interested in joining, but I've just got a few questions. Such as? Well, firstly, um, where do you get all your funding from? Our funding comes from membership. It doesn't come from big business, it doesn't come from unions, it definitely doesn't come from central government. Right, OK. And if I was interested to be a member, but I haven't got much time, is that, is that a problem? Most of our members haven't got that much time to give the power party. So you, you give as much time or as little time as you want. At the end of the day, the Liberal Democrats must be fun. If it's not, you won't get active. Okay. Okay, well, yeah, I'd quite like to join. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Now, what, what we have here is, um, is our membership donation. Right. There's a sliding scale of what we're going to ask you to pay. Okay, yeah. right, and basically, I'll standard figure which we ask you to pay otherwise you can choose any of those for so if I give you a pen okay, yeah. thank you very much there you go easy isn't it as long as you remember the five point plan you'll be amazed at how many people just come over and start talking and once they do that you can offer them a leaflet and you can try those five points even if they don't join, they'll be impressed that we had that presence and they'll think we're far larger than the local group actually is. That's particularly useful at local election times when it's basically free advertising. And some people will come back again and ask you more information. So they don't join the first time, but they'll join the second. Try it, see how it works for you. Let's move on. Letter writing. For David Parry, it was just another ordinary morning. Little did he know that the letter in his hallway was no ordinary letter. He had entered the recruitment zone. Ever thought about joining the Liberal Democrats? Thanks for your support in the recent by-election. Although we didn't win, we did get over 1,300 votes, which is more than twice what we achieved at the last local elections. I'm writing to you now to ask if you're actually joining the Liberal Democrats. Let me give you a few minutes to tell you why. As you know, we're active all year round, not just at election time. For example, the Focus newsletter keeps you up to date. So you've probably heard of our recent success in our issues. You may be surprised to learn that we fund all our activities from money-raising events and from our membership subscriptions. Unlike the other parties, we don't get funding from big business or from trade unions. That means we're accountable to the membership. Joining doesn't mean you have to get active. Many of our members never actually set foot outside the house. Lastly, it's up to you what you pay. There's a recommended subscription, but also a minimum, and it's up to you to decide how much you want to pay. 
fill in the form below and return it to the free post address. Hope to hear from you soon. Remember, you don't have to get active if you don't want to. The main thing is to support the party with your membership fee. So straight back to local and national campaigning all year round. Phyllis, have you got a pen? OK, maybe it's not always quite that straightforward and they might not sign up by return of post. But once they've got the letter, you can bet they'll be thinking about it. And at the very least, they'll know a little bit more about us and our policies. And they will be impressed by the fact that we've made the effort to write. And that in itself is a plus. OK then, lastly, let's look at the telephone. Hello, can I speak to Andrew Archer, please? Speak in. Hello, Andrew. My name is uh, John Campbell. I'm, from the, I'm calling from the local Democrats. Uh, basically, I'm phoning to thank you for your support in the recent election. Oh, that's all right. Thanks. This, thank you. The second reason why I'm phoning is that we are phoning around a few people who supported us in the last election, asking them whether they've ever been interested in joining the party. What exactly is it that you do? For the Liberal Democrats, politics isn't just a one every four, one every five year thing. We're involved in politics all year round, national and local politics. You maybe have seen some of the activities we're up to in the local Focus magazine, which is, I think, delivered to your door uh, once every two months. How do you pay for it all? Don't you get uh, a grant from the government or unions? The thing about Liberal Democrats, as opposed to some of the other national parties, is that we get no money uh, whatsoever from uh, big business and no money from uh, trade unions. We are entirely reliant on members such as myself and my colleagues, and hopefully yourself, joining. And it's the funds we get from those subscriptions which actually fund general election campaigns and local election campaigns. It sounds really good, but I don't think I'll have the time to get involved. Well, being a member of the Liberal Democrats is a voluntary thing. You can spend as much or as little time really uh, getting involved. Sure, we have members who are out canvassing uh, around the local area, but also uh, many of our members simply join uh, every year and the money which we receive from their subscriptions pay for the things I mentioned earlier on. Now, not everyone, of course, has to pay uh, the same amount. You can pay really uh, as much as you can afford. We have a sliding scale really to suit, uh, to suit anyone. If I decided to join, how would I go about signing up? Well, we have two ways, probably. We have uh, meetings every uh, second Thursday. In fact, we're having one next Thursday in the local community hall. Uh, meetings start at 7.30 and you can come along get involved in one of the discussions or one of the debates, but alternatively, perhaps I or one of my colleagues could pop round and talk to you about joining the party further and maybe answer any questions you may have. When would you be able to pop round? Wednesday be OK. But why don't I pop round about 8 o'clock on Wednesday evening? We can talk about the party on, on Wednesday. I'll see you then. Right, Wednesday. OK, thanks for phoning. OK, look forward to it. Thanks very much, Andrew. Bye-bye then. Phoning up known supporters, or even anyone who's expressed a vague interest, can give you great dividends for very little effort. Remember, you can call people in any weathers up till 9 in the evening, and if they're busy, you can call back later. Try it, it certainly works. So, we've looked at the four ways to use the five-point plan. Now, you can always mix and match. You can give letters out on the stall, drop things off whenever you're canvassing, you can phone people up and agree to meet them and then go around and use the doorstep techniques. It's up to you. The main thing is you do something structured around the five-point plan. The five-point plan is key to being successful in recruitment. Now, as always, there's a list of don'ts and they're pretty obvious really. First of all, don't be rude. Oh, honestly, some people are never satisfied. I suppose you'd rather Paddy Ashton came around himself, would you? Don't seem bored. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Don't seem inappropriately dressed. Drunk. Don't be really slow and boring. Hello. My name is Brian Mitchell. I'd like to take you through the history of the Liberal Party since the turn of the century. All frightening. <coughs> the the five-point plan is at the key to all our recruitment. 
Stay clear of the don'ts, practice the do's, and you're well on your way to having a very effective recruitment campaign. Remember, you're the face of the party when you're out there. Therefore, it's important that you really do structure what you say. And if you do that, you'll be successful. Our policies are popular, and you'll almost always get a good reaction on the door, even if they don't join, so don't worry about that. Not just that, but in these pads at the back, you'll find the five-point plan laid out, so you can always carry it with you. And there are details in the booklet. <laughs> Lastly then, we've got to turn this vision into action. And to do that, you'll need a written action plan for your recruitment activities. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the last section of the video. And here it is, the Recruitment Action Plan form. Now, you should have some of these in your handbook. Well, I know you have, because I put them in there myself. So I'll ask you to get one out in a minute, and then we'll work through it. During this section of the video, we'll be asking you to pause the video to give you time to fill that in. So, during the first pause, could you get that form out? Now, the important thing is to get something down. Don't worry about getting it exactly right. You can work the details later. This whole section is about commitment, is to making sure that something is on paper, because that pretty much guarantees that something will happen. Now, let's start with the first section, and this shouldn't be too difficult. Just write down the name of your group at the top, your local party or region, whoever's there watching this video now. Done that? So far, so good. OK. I want you to write down two dates when you will do something with regard to recruitment. Two different dates. So, once again, pause the video and fill that in now. Right. Next. This is the important bit. Agree what you're going to do on those two dates. Stall, door-to-door -door canvassing, telephone recruiting. It's up to you. Maybe you've got some thoughts of your own. Write something down for both of those occasions right now from the list that we've talked about from your own list. So fill that section in now. Where are you going to meet? You need to fill that in next so that everyone is going to turn up at the right place at the right time. You wouldn't believe the number of times things go wrong because this hasn't been agreed. So fill that in now. Right. Now agree who's in charge of coordinating the details, getting the materials, the recruitment pads, or the stall, or the canvas sheets, whatever it happens to be, and write that down for both occasions. If you haven't got one single person, you can bet that nothing will happen. So now allocate somebody to take responsibility for each of those events. Not necessarily the same person. Okay? Well done, leaders. Now you need a list of people who are going to help you on the day. So fill in the section, who else is coming. Remember, if you have it written down, you're committed to doing it. Next section, special notes, comments on recruiting plans. Put down anything you need to make the event run smoothly. Do you need a stall? Do you need extra recruitment pads, leaflets? Put it all in there now so that you don't end up empty-handed when you actually run the event. Also, any special notes about the event itself. Perhaps there's a particular street that should be avoided, or perhaps there's a particular area you think you're going to do very well in. Write all that down now so that you don't forget it on the day. Note of warning for the leaders here. It's your responsibility to make sure that any materials are available on the day. Feel free to delegate it, but make sure it happens. OK, the last section. What's your target? We said at the start of the video, 10% across the next two months. Well, I hope they can commit to at least that. If you're a small group, let's say less than 50, you should be aiming to recruit between 10 and 20 people at least over the next two months. If you're a large group, 10% might be pretty good. The main thing is, you now set yourself a target. The only limitation to whether you achieve it or not will be how hard you work at it. 
I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you work towards these kinds of goals because it gives you a vision that you have to achieve. So talk amongst yourselves now, make a decision, but set a target and please set a realistic one that you genuinely intend to achieve. So, there it is. A completed recruitment plan for two events. That means you've got a structure with dates, times, who's involved, who's in charge, for two specific events to build your membership. Now all you have to do is make sure that you turn up with the right materials and make it happen. I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you actually stand by the commitments you've made there. It's the beginning of a successful campaign towards the targets that you wrote down at the very bottom. Good news, all the information we've covered in this video is contained in the handbook that came with it. Use that liberally. So that's it. You've heard the benefits of recruitment, you've heard how to recruit, and you've generated an action plan that will turn those ideas into results. Just one last thing. People ask, can recruiting really make any difference? Well, it's true to say that not all our members get active, but some of us do. And don't forget that every single member of parliament, every councillor, every activist had to be signed up by someone. And they'd never have joined if somebody hadn't asked them to. So every member you get, every member you get makes a difference. Good luck. Oops.